Holy moly, a cherry bottle. Not too common. Welcome, I'm Hawaiian Shirt Papa. Sometimes with others, I visit a variety of antique, vintage, and thrift shops within Southern Ontario. Sometimes we don't get anything. Come tour with me vicariously. Hi, and welcome to another tour by Hawaiian Shirt Papa. This time of the Crossroads Antiques. There's some pictures coming up here in just a moment. This is the view of the eastern side of the structure. And moment, it says trading post, so that's why I had to put that up. And the west side has this. Just a bit to the left of this, there's a, uh, a trailer that sells uh, tube stakes and items of that nature. This is the entrance. It has two ways to go in. So I'm going in on the right hand side and there is already stuff outside. Just so you're not surprised. There are some booths. They are far from being the more common ones. Uh, there's, these are prob really appropriate for the larger uh, larger items that wouldn't necessarily be worthy of putting indoors. Uh, some of them are intended to be used outdoors, so that's why they're out here. Some of them may have gotten weather damaged already, but they may have been like that before they came out here. Wheel covers, I mean, sets of four. They're always useful to somebody who's redoing a car. And there's a pump of some sort. I wasn't getting into that one too much a large scale and I do mean large it's it's a good uh, let's call it in feet almost six foot tall it's going to be hefty and heavy some other signage that you might see some old doors and related matters there and now we're seeing the other side of it. That was just the area where you cross from one side to the other side. And uh, yes, there's a lot, but it is under roof cover. I'm not saying it won't get wet, but it is reasonably protected. I don't know the full story on them, but it seems that there are some who are vendors out here. Here's a school desk. I actually remember using one of those. I didn't get the ink in, that was placed in the ink well, but that was only a year or so before I got to that point. Some wood block planes. They're really nice looking ones for making uh, like moldings and baseboards and items of that nature. Sewing machine. Not the best place to store that. I'll, I'll say that. But if you're only looking for a decor piece, it might be a good starting point if the price is right for you. A full case of small bottles, 7-Up. Small bottles used to be served at bars. You didn't find them generally in the, the stores, uh, the 6-Ounce as they were called, because that was about what you needed to make a mixed drink. This uh, Ford hydraulic fluid can was 20 bucks. Some younger person's toys. A few other things along here. Now we're getting close to the other entrance. Now we're looking at the center portion from the other side. We saw it a bit earlier. Now, sometimes when you look at it from the other side, it looks quite different. Yeah, there's the odd bicycle. There's some fishing rods, but I was looking more at the Super Test barrel, which is uh, for sale for 45. And they also had 
some wooden yardsticks right there with the fishing rods. So somebody's into either fishing rods or 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 yardsticks. They're between five and fifteen dollars. The ones I saw. That one's a fifteen. It's probably a little more. Uh, less common. It said Brantford on it. The other ones maybe are a little more common. Uh, somebody had a uh, of a flag for Yamaha audio video. They these are similarly set up as booths for what's inside, as you shortly see. <clears throat> Just so you're aware, this is only part one. This is a fairly large facility. And uh, I didn't want to make any one video too long, so I separated them. So this is the very first of those. So you see various things there. Some, those are skates, tie on skates. You have a nice leather shoe. You can pop, pop the skates onto there. Would I use them? Probably not. More decor piece. All kinds of things. I, I no, no one booth will give a f full indication of what it is. Oh yes, the Alice in Wonderland clock, where the time goes backwards. A metal flag. So we should wafting in the wind that way so any one of these booths you might think oh yeah it's that kind of stuff well not always a couple of lamps some old soft drink bottles I remember the 26 ounce or bottles some of the brands I even remember not as some of them weren't as common tin light was interesting it'd be good for you could make it functional uh, you'd have to replace uh, some electrical components, which are still available. They're not as commonly available. Now we've jumped inside. Here we are. We're going through a booth that's got uh, some glassware and Pyrex. Some of it is British Pyrex prior to the... They were part of Pyrex, but they were using a different name. And... Uh, sorry, I didn't get a better view of it, that, but that's taking care of your vintage glass. Don't put them in the dishwashers. The dishwasher will cause etching and they won't look as good after that. And here we are. Uh, another booth and another set, a collection of uh, lovely objects. Depending on what you're looking for. There was a, there's the cherry bottle. You saw it briefly there. They, there was another one I saw that also had glass glasses with them. So you are not stuck with only the bottle. As a, I saw more than one place that had uh, like Coke cans and bottles. I'm not sure if they're opened or not. They, they'd be better if they were drained because they will corrode through eventually. Whether it's a glass bottle or not, the, the cap is being metal, would corrode easily. Takes a long time, but it will corrode. Besides that, I wouldn't want to drink the fluid inside after the amount of time they've been kept. So here we are, some more Pyrex. For those who like Pyrex, they've got quite a few places that have it. There were the uh, tomato glasses. At one point, uh, Westwood picked up ones that had tomato. Uh, those were cherries. She has picked up ones that say to have tomatoes. I'm sorry, I made a mistake on those ones. Those were tomato cherry ones that you saw in the um, on the shelf here. Um, they're so similar in look, but they are not the same. Uh, one of those potty training chairs a few cases for musical instruments I'm not going to say guitar because I'm not sure if they're guitar uh, some sort of uh, 
it's, it looks like a totem pole, but it's actually the post for these the booth. And they had a toboggan. Ah, oh, the cherry with the glasses. <clears throat> Going around another booth. A uh, real mishmash. In these kind of places, you never know what you're going to come across. There's plenty of treasures to be located. It's just a matter of the right person seeing that and it being their treasure. Each booth has its own personality. Some more canes. Statuaries, uh, costume jewelry, look like a uh, synthetic lay. Some artwork back there of various types. Some are signs, some are more modern, some are old. Some some of the booths are a little more um, of an older vintage style. Some are more of a newer one. This one's got hats. Uh, that's not purple, but sorry about that. It has to do with how the camera catches that color. So it was more of a brownie camel color. Generally, the color rendition is reasonably good, but on certain colors, it doesn't seem to come across. I found that in another video I did as well. I tried to color correct and it, it had a lot more problems. This one has, again, a whole variety of different items from artwork to the little statuary to uh, shelves and ceramics, linens. Now this I thought was interesting. I'm not saying I wanted it, but it was a uh, a saw blade that had been painted up as artwork. Some other items that are marked down according to the sign. Quite the collection of objects there. Now these were very intriguing these uh, carved well, uh, they look like carved oriental uh, dragons both in a beige a light colored wood and in a dark colored wood uh, this this booth looks like they had uh, collector type of dolls and cards and toys still in box i think in many cases now we're onto another booth, of course. There is a lot of things to look at. Going through a, on a cursory level like this took me the better part of two hours to do the whole place. You're getting this portion of it in about 20 minutes total. Some nice looking vintage audio systems or components. And the turntables are apparently 50% off. Again, nice looking ones. Some of the older ones have some maintenance things to deal with, but they don't detract from it, in my opinion. It's usually, if it's a belt drive, you do have to replace the belt now and then. Some big old style um, speakers, as, as well as the other components here. And they've got some, I think they're DVDs or, or Blu-ray possibly. And a vintage, I, it looks like a vintage turntable with tube amplifier. It may not be tube amplifier, but it has the look of one. 
although I wouldn't be surprised if it actually was a tube type. Here we're going through, we've got another booth. Holy smoke, a hot dog. And some furniture, including some old light fixtures. That light fixture would be appropriate over a billiard table. Not sure who that person is, but they've got a, a bust of them. Three, uh, four James Bonds up until that point anyway. And here we have some other memorabilia. Some bits of it are artwork, some, you know, some are prints, some are musical components. Oh, books as well. Sorry about the wiggling. There wasn't a lot of room to just turn around and be far enough away to actually get an overview. Some of these booths are pretty small. That was one where I just went to the entrance and scanned it for you. And this is similar. This one's got audio as well. And magazines in this case, as, as well as discs, like audio or DVD, I'm not sure. Some headboards and items of that nature. A little booth in there. There's somebody in there at the time. Whether it be uh, discs or carpet runners or or collectible bits and pieces, automotive parts for vintage vehicles. Some of them new and unused, even a toy, a uh, children's ride-in toy. You'll find lots of stuff here, lots of stuff. And you can determine whether or not the prices are good um, on your visit if you choose to go there. I found some things that were very interesting to me and and uh, Westwood Avenue was actually considering something, but she couldn't quite get the information she wanted from me or nor from where she was looking. Anyway, I hope you continue to watch the uh, next episodes. Hope you subscribe, give us a like and a bell, and we'll see you soon enough. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.